since we've taken a look at what it's like when we open up our app with Android Studio, um, we're going to need at some point to actually run it on something. Now, this is what's interesting because we're going to install what's called a um, virtual device. And you have here this ABD manager. Now, if you recall in the first video of this series, the intro video, I had what looked like a phone over here on the left-hand side, and uh, it was running Android. So essentially, it's an emulator for an Android phone or tablet. Very simple and straightforward. What is interesting, though, about our app in particular, we're going to be running a super user command, so we don't actually have a rooted um, Android uh, virtual device. Um, so to do the final test of this app, you would actually need to test it on a live phone, which we'll talk about how to do that as well. But right now I want to take a look at the Android Virtual Device Manager and how we set that up. Now I already have one set up. Uh, when you open this for the first time, you will not have this set up. And once again, that's this little icon up here, the AVD Manager. We open this up and uh, this will probably be blank for you. Um, if you do get one set up, it's really great because when you're ready to run it, you just hit this play button and it'll go ahead and launch it for you and do all the things that you need to do. But down here at the bottom, it says create a virtual device. And so let's go ahead and look at that. Now, I already have a Nexus 5X um, device right here with API 26. Um, Let's go ahead, we'll just make a Nexus 5 as well, but there's there's everything in here, Pixel 2s and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we'll just make a Nexus 5 just for the grins here, and uh, we'll say um, next, and we'll say yes, we want to do for Oreo, because in this case that's what we were, we were building for. Um, we'll say next, and uh, startup orientation, we want portrait, uh, graphics, emulated performance, uh, you can look at advanced settings here and uh, you can actually change some things like the camera, you know, if you actually have a webcam or something like that, network speeds, uh, you know, boot options, um, and, uh, you know, size of the internal storage, uh, lots of different options that you have here. Perhaps the most uh, interesting of the options um, is really comes down to how the graphics work, and there's different ways that the graphics can work. Right here, it's just set to automatic, and you don't have to uh, you don't have to worry about uh, that. Hopefully, for yourself, you can just leave it at the default of automatic and hit finish, and it'll go ahead and build your new virtual device. And there it goes, built it for me. Size on disk is pretty small because it hasn't had anything installed yet. Now normally when you do this for the first time, it'll actually have to download something. I've already downloaded these before, so it was a little bit faster for me. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, launch this. Phone, uh, and then it's going to start displaying. Of course, it goes through the normal boot up sequence, just like the regular phone would do. You can see the little bar going across here, getting it ready for uh, for running, just like on your regular phone. Now, you do not have to install. Uh, a virtual device. You can just hook up your phone directly, which we will look at at the end of this series and how we can hook up our phone directly to the um, to the IDE here, to the Android Studio, and um, using ADB commands automatically, it'll send your app to the phone. So here we are. Uh, doesn't like the virtual SD, we can set that up, we can say, oh, we'll just use this portable storage for now. Do you want to erase and format it? Sure, you could do that, that's fine. Didn't really like that. 
too well, but that's okay. Uh, download a new version of Google Play, of course, just like a regular phone, and you see that your phone here has all the usual suspects of uh, Google um, applications and stuff. Now, do notice that uh, I grabbed one that had the Play Store available. There's some versions that come with Play Store and some that come without. And so that's an important thing to keep in mind uh, for yourself. Now notice here uh, also um, for yourself you can close this window and this one stays open. Uh, on Linux occasionally I have a problem where if I go to some other window and come back where my screen does not refresh and it won't uh, it won't be updated so you'll have to like click or move something to try to get the screen to refresh of the phone so that it will display again and we'll probably see that from time to time as we go through and uh, and do this so now that we have our uh, virtual device up and running I just want to real quick run our empty application that we just built and so what we're going to do is we're going to hit this play button right here run the app and it says what do you want to run it on and we have a connected device which is that Nexus 5 that's open right now and then available virtual devices it'll actually if you choose one of these it'll start it for you um, but we'll just use the one that's already launched and we can say always use that same one for future launches that way we don't have to answer this question every time. And so it's going to install that for us. And once that's installed, right now the Gradle build is running, uh, then it's going to um, send it installing the APK. It's sending it over and poof, there we go. Here's our SU app and all it says is hello world and it's blue and white with this pink floating object that looks like a mail envelope. So um, not very much in here right now. We do have a menu with the settings that when you click on it, it actually doesn't do anything for us, but uh, really, um, really basic, uh, simple setup that we have here.